people, I'm Jenny Motherall. I'm your local fourth generation witch of Irish descent, I'll have you know, no less. Today we're back with my ever popular almanac series looking at all the witchcraft that you can do on what days, when and why during the month of March. So what I first like to do with these videos is to give you a general overview of all the witchcraft trends that happen throughout the months of March and then we'll look at the nitty gritty day to day detail of what witchcraft you can do and why. Therefore we're going to start with our general overview. March is one of those funny months isn't it? It is actually spring because you can see the flowers growing, you can see the buds coming and the blossom blossoming but it's bloody cold, it's windy, it's quite dramatic weather. The old adage of in like a lion, out like a lamb applies through March. But it was one of the most significant of the months of the agricultural year because this is when we sow our seed can imagine the superstitions and traditions that rose from this. Irish Catholics still to this day will sprinkle holy water over their potato crop when they plant them in March. This is very much taken from the pagan practices of wishing the best for your crops for the year and putting that magical intent into them. This time of year is invigorating, isn't it, with the blustery winds and you can feel the green man, that god of the spring, as he stalks across the land, pulling forth the energy into the trees that they fall into leaf. The Anglo-Saxons and the Welsh called this month the winter spring and it's known that there's going to be a sharp frost in March so don't count on your crops necessarily surviving. The end of March, the last three days of March are known as a blackthorn winter because it can often snow. We're not out of the woods yet but we're very much into spring. So and what do you do in the spring? Well, the best thing to do is to scrub your house. Great, it's time to clean. I'm not a clean freak, although I do like watching other people clean on TikTok. It's quite fun, probably because I never see anyone else clean apart from me. Kittens born in March were considered the best of all cats. I don't know what the best type of cat is. The best mouser, maybe? However, if you are of a pagan mind, what you should really have is a black cockerel that is also hatched in March because this will keep away those pesky evil spirits. I prefer doing warding spells myself, but a black cockerel might work. March is filled, is it not, with a yellowness about it. The daffy down dilly, as we used to call the little daffodils. These are going to strew themselves across the countryside along with your primroses. Now, primroses, you should only pick in bunches of 13, by the way, to bring them into your house. It's bad luck otherwise. This is also the time before the grass has got too long that you can find the elusive four-leafed clover. The clover plant is now growing with the spring with everything else. Before it's hidden by the, all the other plants, you can sometimes find those elusive charmed four-leafers, which keep away evil spirits, protect you from bad luck, um, make you happy, and you can wish upon and bring you gold, apparently. My mother, who was a very uh, strange witch in many ways, and brilliant but strange, all she ever had to do was to sit on a grass and a patch of grass and she'd go, oh look darling, I found a four leaf clover, another one, here you have this one. She was always giving them to me and she always thought that they were such a good um, omen for the future. So every house that I went into that she immediately then found a four leaf clover, I now consider was blessed by my mother. And finally, March is the continuation throughout the British countryside of feral football. Feral football is decidedly ambiguous when it comes to rules, the pitch, the goals, how it's played. I love a bit of feral football. We didn't do feral football when I was growing up. We did something called fireball hockey. Now, I was going to tell you what fireball hockey is, but I'm not allowed to say these words on YouTube because I might get banned. So I'm not. So don't play it or do anything with it. But it's great fun. And it is played exactly as it sounds. So I'll leave it at that. That is my overview for March. There is plenty to be looking at. You're going to get out of the garden. You're going to do some spring cleaning. You're going to protect your house from evil spirits by having a rooster or get a new kitten or finding that four-leaf clover. 
there is of course many other more things to march than I can put on in this video so I'll put a playlist up here of my almanac series and if you'd like to go to previous years march playlist the overview will give you plenty more information so now let's get on to the day-to-day -day detail and of course we always start with the first of March the first thing that you do before anything else on the 1st of March is to wake up and say white rabbits. This is an old, old custom. White rabbits were always considered incredibly lucky. Rabbits in general are lucky. We all say white rabbits as soon as we wake up. It is an old tradition and I believe it's to do with calling in the luck of the rabbit. Before you say anything else, say white rabbits. Very important. The next thing we do on the 1st of March is to make sure that all our doors and windows are shut because this is the day that the army of fleas is going to invade your house. If you keep all your doors and windows shut and don't open them at all, not even to go out, I think you should just stay in under the covers on the 1st of March, um, then you will not suffer from fleas at all this year. Now, if you live in Strathclyde, which is in Scotland, you play something called Wapiti Scurry. That sounded almost... Danish, didn't it? Apologies to the Scots. I obviously can't do a Scotch accent. I lived in Scotland for four years and I was quite good then, but now I can't. Anyway, Wapiti Skuri is where children go around hitting each other with paper balls on long bits of string and any other adults that they can find, making as much noise as possible after it's dark. And this is an order to chase away the evil spirits for the spring. Now, it's very well known, and actually I completely agree that loud noises chase away evil spirits. It is something to do with the vibrational energy that the noise creates. And so therefore, it is a good idea to go around banging saucepans in your house, or if you're like my husband and eldest boy, you play extremely loud metal slash heavy metal around the house. Finally, for you Welsh out there, it is St David's Day. So it's considered extremely lucky for you to wear a leek in your hat, because apparently St David was a person who told the Welsh army to put leeks in their hats in order that they could identify each other in battle. Happy St David's Day to you, the Welsh. The 5th of March is the start of the Mad March hair season. So the Mad March hair season is not great for us witches because they could be our shape-shifting sisters out there. Witches were known to shift into the shape of hairs and so you see any hairs acting oddly, let them be. You can't shoot these hairs with normal, you know, guns and bullets. You have to have a rowan leaves or rowan branches behind your gun stock when you shoot them or use a silver bullet like a werewolf. If you see any hare while setting out on a journey on this morning, I'm very sad to say that your journey is not going to be a success. You should turn around, go home, stay there. The 10th of March is the night of the new moon. Astrologers believe that whatever zodiacal sign the moon is in, the moon will take on those elements of that sign throughout the month. This is the new moon of Pisces on this day, and Pisces is a deeply sensitive sign, which means this Pisces new moon is all about delving into the dream world. Dreams are incredibly important to us witches. We like to use them to foretell future or to speak with spirits and animals and the past and loved ones. Dreams are where we release our inner inhibitions and reach for those spiritual aspects. Pay attention to your dreams on this night of the new moon because they may well have pearls of wisdom, especially for you. The 10th of March is also known as Mothering Sunday in the UK. Now, this is when children go back and visit their mother, taking, you know, nice gifts such as flowers, daffodils and Mothering Sunday cakes and chocolate, etc, etc. It was taken over by the Christian faith and called, well, it's, it's, so we're going to take over Mothering Sunday and, um, and have it as when you visit your mother church. Absolute rot. We always visited our mothers on this day. And it is so important to continue with this because as a mother, I'm mainly laughed at by my children, teased mercilessly and told I know absolutely nothing, when in fact I know everything.
the 15th of March. This is known as the Ides. 15 is Ides. And the Ides of March has always been known as an unlucky day. Beware the Ides of March, said Shakespeare when he was killing off Julius Caesar. That The Romans always had it thus and they were taking their you know, traditions from the Greeks, from the Egyptians, etc. Don't start anything new on this day. Just carry on with your normal day-to-day -day life. The 17th of March is that great St Paddy's Day, St Patrick's Day, the Irish national holiday. Now, St Patrick's Day is absolutely symbolised by the colour green and leprechauns. The colour green, of course, is synonymous with the Emerald Isle, with Ireland, which has incredibly fertile grounds. And because it's warmed by the Gulf Stream, doesn't often snow. I mean, there is the saying, it never snows in Ireland, which is blatantly untrue. I can remember several occasions when I've been buried in six foot deep snowfalls. However, St Patrick's Day is also bound up with the leprechaun. Now, it's said that when the Danes came over to Ireland, they entrusted their gold to the leprechaun, and the leprechauns hid that gold in crocs. And they placed the gold at the end of rainbows, as well as wherever leprechauns place their gold. Now, you can get the gold out of a leprechaun by catching them, and if you've got them, do not take your eye off them, and they are honour bound to tell you where their gold is. St Patrick's Day is also known as a day of abundance and the Celts used to believe that every fold would have a calf and every pool hold a salmon. Which is rather charming, isn't it? So St Patrick's Day you should certainly eat, drink, be merry and wear green and find your leprechaun and get your crock of gold. Perfect day, St Patrick's Day. The 19th of March is when the sun enters Aries. Now, we all like to know what an Aries personage should be, especially from my old almanac of 1642. So I'm going to read you what it says. This is the Aries man. He born of Aries shall be of good wit and neither rich or poor. So well, that's encouraging, isn't it? He shall soon be angry, but easily pleased. So he's strong emotionally, I think is the words there. He will have power of the goods of dead folk. I don't know if that means he's going to be a lawyer or he is just has power over estates. Who knows? At 34, he shall be a fornicator, but wedded at 35, whereupon fornication will stop, one presumes. And if he is not, he will then become chaste. So he'll be a fornicator up to the age of 34. But after 35, that's it. Aries woman, let's have a look at them. The Aries woman shall be ireful and suffer great wrongs from day to day. So you've got a hard life, Aries woman. She shall lose her husband, but recover a better one. Like that. <laughs> yeah, I've lost this one, but I found him. He's much nicer over there. Uh, she shall be sick at five years old and in mortal peril at 25. And if she survives this mortal peril, she will be in debt. Oh, it's terrible for the female, isn't it? Until 43, but afterwards she will prosper. Aries can also be told by their noses. So if you've got an Aries person and they have a crooked nose, they are unstable. A beaky nose, they are bold. A flat nose, they are lecherous. And a round nose, they are indecisive. So that's Aries for you. The 19th of March is considered the opposite of the 15th. If you are born on this day, you are incredibly lucky. If you're a boy, it's known that you cannot be killed in battle. In fact, I do think it's true because um, my long dead father-in-law was born on this day and he used to enter all these competitions and win. And the first prizes would be like, you know, major cars, major holidays, houses. He won everything. He was incredibly lucky. So the next date in our diary is the 24th of March. Now this is the Angel Gabriel's feast day. Don't get hung up here about angels being part of Christian mythology. They are so not. The Christians merely took them over. We have known about angels and talked with angels for far longer than Christianity has ever been here. Now, the angel Gabriel is very much an angel that we should be looking up towards. They are a messenger angel and they are invoked by those people who are looking to them for good news. So if you're wanting good news to come, today is the day to ask the angel Gabriel and wait and hear what they bring. 
the 20th of March is, of course, the vernal equinox, Ostara, one of the great feasts of the Wheel of the Year. Now, I'm not going to tell you too much about Ostara in this video here, because I, of course, I'm going to do my own video all about it, and you will find it on my channel if it's not up already. But if you'd like to watch a video on Ostara now, and I haven't put it up, I'll put up last year's here for you and have a look at that. The 25th of March is the night of the full moon. This full moon is the last of the winter season moons. It's known as the worm moon because the earthworms are come out of their winter slumber and the crow moon because the crows are obviously looking for earthworms. This moon is a great balancing moon. and The water that is blessed by this full moon, your moon water of March, will have a great balance within it. I do like a bit of moon water in my spells actually because it gives it that extra layer of energy. There is also a penumbral eclipse which you can see in the Americas and Asia. It's considered very, um, uh, not good luck anyway. I'm not sure if it's bad luck, but it's definitely not good luck if you're pregnant to go and look at the moon. So don't do that. What they say that actually happens if you do that is that your baby is born moonstruck, i.e. it's likely bizarre. Now, I personally think that moonstruck people are rather lovely, so I wouldn't mind. If you woke up on the 1st of March and said white rabbits is the first thing that you said, then on the 31st of March, the last thing you say as you lay your head on your pillow is hair, hair. Did you do it? Now this is going to set your luck in stone for all those things that you have accomplished in March and they will forever grow with luck and greatness. This is very much to do with hair's whole balance of light and darkness. They're considered shape-shifting animals, they can change their form, and it's all to do with the vernal equinox, you know, that period of balance. And so that is why, if you say hair hair, last thing before you go to sleep on the 31st of March, your luck will be set. Let me know in the comments which one of these that you particularly liked and are particularly going to do. People ask me, you know, do I follow this almanac myself? And absolutely I do. I'm not great with a full moon ritual every month because I'm not great at night anymore because I'm too old. But during the daytime, I can certainly do, you know, whatever I need. Otherwise, come and join my coven. You can learn how to set up your own coven whilst in mine. It's a great way to experience witchcraft from the very beginners to the very advanced. I promise you, you'll learn something new. And you also need to go around liking and subscribing because otherwise, oh, I can't carry on making these videos if you don't subscribe. And I'm so grateful to all of those who already have. Thank you. And I will see you all next week.